Okay, in our last video, which was part eight of our kinematic series, we learned about Newton's second law of motion, uh, force equals mass times acceleration. We also looked at the different forces that are acting on any object. So we looked at the weight, friction, normal force, as well as the applied force, and how an angle would affect this. We also looked at the sum of the forces. So we were able to tell a balance force from an imbalance force. Now in this video, what we're going to look at is motion. So we're going to look at this same object, we're going to consider how it actually moves, and we're going to tie this in with our kinematic equations that we did in earlier parts of this series. So go ahead and subscribe so you can see the rest of the series, or go check out any of my playlists. Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I wanted to use this example to show you an application of the, the Newton second law, F equals MA, as well as how it dovetails in with the kinematic equations. So what we have here is a 50 kilogram crate that is resting on a horizontal surface. And we know the horizontal surface has a coefficient of friction of 0.3. That is a kinetic coefficient of friction. Now, if the crate is subjected to a 400 Newton towing force, which you know is towing at a, an angle of theta, determine the velocity of the crate in, in three seconds from starting from rest. Okay, so how are we going to approach this? So we're gonna need a strategy. Okay, so what do we have known? What do we have known here? So we set up a list of givens. So the givens is we know the mass is 50 kilograms. We've got an applied force of 400 Newtons. The coefficient of friction is 0.3. The initial velocity is zero meters per second. So we know it's starting from rest and we've got an angle of inclination of, or an angle of the, the forces, applied forces is 30 degrees. Okay, so we know enough information as well as from our, our last part of the series, part eight, we also know all the forces that are acting on this thing. So we can start a free body diagram. We can actually draw a free body diagram. So we just start with that little figure. We've got our, our force vector for the applied forces. We know there's going to be a weight. There's going to be a normal force. There's going to be a frictional force. And there's going to be a vertical and horizontal component to the applied forces. We break that down. And there can be calculated by P times a sine of theta and P times a cosine of theta. We also are going to need a coordinate system. Okay, so now we've got a free body diagram that covers all of the forces that are being applied to that crate. Okay, so now what's the next step for strategy? Okay, so what are we trying to find? All right, so what are we trying to find? Well, we want to know what the velocity is at three seconds. All right, so that's one thing we're gonna have to look for. So the velocity of three seconds. So now how are we gonna approach this? First, we're going to do the, the sum of the forces and accelerations of the crate. We can do that. We, we have enough information to achieve that. Uh, well, second thing we're going to have to do, we're gonna pull out our old kinematic equations. So we know the crate's in motion. We're gonna apply the kinematic equations to determine the velocity. Okay, you know, Going back to step one, we're going to establish those forces, so F equals MA, so we're going to tie these together. The dovetail between those two steps is going to have to be that acceleration. That acceleration, because uh, we know there's a time and, and we want to know what a velocity is. Okay, so now let's start with a clean slate. Let's, let's get another slide up here so we can start solving this problem. All right, so we know we have what's given up or in the upper left. We know what we're trying to find, the velocity at three seconds. And we got our free body diagram, so we'll put that a little more into the into the, the convenient part of the page. Now, since we're gonna start solving this problem, let's start addressing some of the forces that we can get right off the bat. Now, we know the mass, and we're gonna assume gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So that means that we can start looking at things like the weight, we also know an angle and we know an applied force. So we can start looking at those horizontal and vertical components of that force. So, so let's start calculating that right off the bat. So we got the weight is 490.5 Newtons. 
again that's just the mass of that crate times the uh, acceleration due to gravity we know the horizontal component is just the the applied force times the uh, cosine of 30 which is 346.6 newtons and the vertical component which is just the applied force times the sine of 30 which gives us 200 newtons okay so those are things that we can calculate fairly easily and now we can start looking at the sum of the forces so in the vertical we know it's not moving you know it's not moving so that means it's balanced so that means the sum of those forces are going to be zero so we've got zero our forces net a zero in the vertical direction and if we add these up and following our coordinate system where up is positive you know our normal force minus the weight plus the vertical component of the applied force all right so we've got this here that we're going to add in with these other two forces the weight and the normal force so putting that together we end up with a normal force of 290.5 newtons okay so now we've got a normal force and if you remember from the last video this ties in with the horizontal sum of forces because of that friction which is the coefficient of friction times the normal force so we've got that one unknown that's going to help us solve the next set of problems so some of the forces in the horizontal again following our coordinate system to the right is positive this is an unbalanced force so our forces in the X are going to equal to the mass of that crate times some acceleration that that crate is going through okay so we know this thing is moving and that comes out to be in that horizontal force that's part of the applied P times the cosine of theta so P times the cosine of theta minus the friction force which is resisting so mu times the normal force which we do know now so they're subtracting they're going to the opposite direction that's going to equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction so we can plug these in we only have one unknown now and that comes out to an acceleration of 5.815 meters per second squared all right so now that we've got an acceleration we've got a time frame that we're looking at and we have an initial velocity so now we've got to decide which one of our four kinematic equations are suitable well let's just eliminate the ones that aren't we don't have to worry about any displacement so we can start to eliminate say number one uh, number two has a displacement which we don't really worry about so we take rid of that and number four is the same thing so let's just get rid of that so we've got an ex, uh, equation that has a final velocity a final velocity an initial velocity an acceleration which we know and a time frame that we're concerned with and we know this initial velocity is going to drop out at zero but we do have it so we have enough here to, to use this kinematic equation so we've got the initial velocity we've got a time and we've got an acceleration so just putting those values into place we end up the velocity at three seconds velocity v sub 3s is equal to the acceleration times the time of three seconds which gives us a velocity of 15.6 meters per second so if that video was helpful to you at all go ahead and subscribe to my channel I do videos on manufacturing as well as different engineering topics please share the video to anyone you think might be able to benefit from it so you can subscribe to me on YouTube you can also follow me on Twitter where I go through a lot of different uh, engineering and manufacturing topics up to date talking about the skills gap and in industry 4.0 or the fourth industrial revolution you can also follow me on Google Plus I have two fairly active communities one is uh, manufacturing skills and education where I talk about obviously manufacturing and manufacturing skills manufacturing technology and I try to help people showcase their companies on that channel and then there's the engineers reference where I talk about general engineering activity uh, a lot on automation 
a lot on just like new technologies and different types of you know math applications and different things that engineering goes through so another pretty active community and you know anytime you see my little logo the infinity double infinity you can know that i've gotten my presence there uh, again thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next video